Moving down into the abdominal area, again we can follow the pectoralis down, this is the pectoralis profundus, all the way down to here. And then all of this stuff that makes up the abdominal wall, there's actually two layers, and if you're very careful, you can actually separate out those two layers, and I've done that here. I've actually been able to tease apart the two layers of the abdominal muscles. And those two layers are the out external and internal abdominal obliques. The one on the outside is the external oblique, the one on the inside is the internal oblique. And they get their name from the fact that the fibers of these muscles run kind of diagonally or obliquely around the sides of the abdominal cavity and then insert into this long band of muscle that runs right down the middle of the abdominal cavity. And those are obviously your abdominal muscles or the rectus abdominis. Moving then to the leg. On the outer surface of the leg there are a few muscles that are, are easily visible. The first one here, the tensor fascia lata, comes off of the iliac crest and is going to come down and insert into the kneecap or the patella. Underneath the tensor fascia lata is the vastus lateralis. You'll recognize that as one of the quadriceps muscles. The vastus lateralis sits right there. If I move dorsally from those two muscles, I've got a large triangular shaped muscle up here. This is going to be the gluteus superficialis. Gluteus superficialis would be analogous to the largest muscle in the human body, which is the gluteus maximus. Gluteus superficialis. And then most of the back of this leg is made up of the rectus femoris. And there's actually two, there's actually two bands. And you can, you can see a little bit of separation here. I didn't get too detailed with my dissection in this part, but you've got one head and then a much larger head here. And those are the two heads of the biceps femoris. And again, biceps means two heads, so it's not, it's not a surprise that we find two parts of that muscle. Also, on the lateral side, or the outside of our leg here, we've got one of our hamstrings back here in the back. This hamstring is the semimembranosus, semimembranosus back here by his tail. Moving him onto his back now so that we can kind of check out the front of the musculature on the medial aspect of his leg. I'm going to pin him down there to hold him open. We've got again the tensor fascia lata. We saw this one on the lateral surface as well. Immediately behind that is the rectus femoris. The rectus femoris. And then we can orient ourselves here by this large vein and artery passing through the thigh. And on the outside of that large vein and artery, kind of the largest muscle or the most noticeable muscle out here is the vastus medialis. So I've got the tensor fascia lata, rectus femoris, vastus medialis. Now if we take the vastus medialis, the rectus femoris, and the vastus lateralis that we saw on the other side of the leg, you'll recognize that those are three out of the four quadriceps muscle. The, ones that we're the one that we're missing is the vastus intermedius. Moving down below that large artery and vein, again cleaning off some of this connective tissue. Immediately underneath that artery is a small little muscle here called the pectineus, which is a hip flexor. Underneath the pectineus I've got a little triangle shaped muscle here called the adductor longus. adductor longus. Underneath the adductor longus then I get into my uh, gracilis, which you would recognize as one of our groin muscles. And there are actually two heads to the gracilis, the gracilis cranialis and the gracilis caudalis. I'm not going to separate those two. Um, 
but if we dig down underneath them a little bit, we'll see another one of our hamstring muscles, and that's the semimembranosus. Also on the inside here, cleared at the back, I can pull off a little piece of the semimembranosus, and again, I was able to see the semimembranosus from the outside or from the lateral surface as well. Now, if I take the semi-tendinosus under here, the semimembranosus down here, and then the large biceps femoris, which was on the other side of the leg, you're gonna recognize that those are the three muscles that make up what we collectively consider the hamstrings group. So let me do a real, real quick review of these before I flip them back over. Tensor fascia lata, rectus femoris, vastus medialis, pectineus, adductor magnus, or I'm sorry, adductor longus, one, two pieces of the gracilis, and then between them is the semi-tendinosus, and in the back is the semi-membranosus. Back to the outside, again the TFL or tensor fascia lata, vastus lateralis underneath that, large gluteus superficialis, biceps femoris, And then again, here's the back side of my semi-membranosis. Now I'm going to reflect the biceps femoris, pull it back just a little bit. And that's going to allow me to see and appreciate the musculature that makes up the calf. And the largest muscle here in the lower leg is the gastrocnemius, big beefy muscle, just like it is on the human. I'm going to go ahead and cut that biceps muscle and get it out of my way. Go ahead and reflect it on back. Large gastrocnemius muscle. Underneath it. I've got a much thinner muscle called the soleus. Running down the outside of this leg, I've got a muscle called the extensor digitorum. Specifically, the extensor digitorum longus. And then on the front of that leg, I have the tibialis cranialis. And this is another good example of naming on the rat and on the human is different. On us, this is gonna be called the tibialis posterior because it's on the front of the body. On the rat, since the rat's walking on all fours and this is actually closer to his head, we call it the tibialis cranialis. So gastrocnemius, soleus, right under there. I've gotta dig a little for it. Extensor digitorum longus, which as the name implies, extends the digits and the tibialis cranialis.